You can use localhost as your own web database server running on your own home system, either a laptop or a server in the closet, or even a Raspberry Pi. You can do this even on a, a server somewhere. And one of the things is that you have to do whenever you launch a server is open a whole bunch of ports, make sure that it's accessible to the web, have probably from security perspective, you need TLS certificates, you need domain names. There's a whole bunch of things you have to do in order to really make things secure. Even when you do that, you've opened up your home servers to the world. And that sounds like a problem, doesn't it? What you can do instead is follow this approach to set up a secure web home server or a server anywhere that can run Node.js. Now, this actually came in a request from Autoglass that asked how to do this sort of approach with PubNub. How can you deal with SQLite uh, database as a local server at home using PubNub? So we have a walkthrough here. Let's actually just walk through the code. Let's, let's, let's see what this, uh, what this is all about. So the whole idea is we've got a ready-made repository that contains the Node.js server application. It uses PubNub to securely exchange the data between your home server encrypted over the wire so you don't have to open up any ports at home. And it listens for SQL queries and then it will execute them. And for uh, demo purposes, or even maybe this is the way you wanna do it, is it's an in-memory SQLite database and then it sends the results back to a client. We actually could just take a look at what it looks like uh, in, in a demo perspective. We'll do that really quick here. So we've got ourselves a server. So we're gonna run npm start. Uh, and as you can see here, we've created a, a SQLite database and it's going to prepare the database with some test data for us. Uh, and then it will open up a, a listener, which is a secure TLS encrypted connection uh, that will allow you to communicate between whatever client, maybe a mobile app or a web app, and maybe a, some something else or even another server somewhere without me having to open up any firewall rules onto my laptop. This is, this is the exciting part. Then what you can do is now you're gonna have the app. You'll have an app, you'll be able to make a request to the database. Since we had database on data for the test data, we'll just say select star from test limit one, and then I can run the query, and then it comes back instantaneously. And this is all over uh, the global network, PubNub's data stream capabilities is, is has an open live connection uh, that is handled through a secure mechanism that doesn't require you to open up any ports. That's the really exciting part. So you can change this up. We can even, wait, uh, what happens if we do this? If we run count on it. Okay, so we get count with that. So we probably would say, uh, we'll do like an alias as count. We run that. Okay, now that makes a lot more sense. So we've got 10 items because we threw 10 items into the test database. So walk through the readme. We wanna walk through the readme really quick just so we can see what's happening, what's even going on. So we've got, uh, the real-time communication between your home server and whatever client uh, is going to be like a mobile app or a web app, right? So we've got our web app here, and then we've got our, our server that's running here, and they are connected through uh, the PubNub communication. We've got an in-memory SQLite database for executing SQL queries, and then we've got that simple web interface, right? This one here, which allows us to quickly run queries against it. So you need Node 14 or later, PubNub API keys. To set this up, you will copy this clone and uh, the repository and then move into the directory. And then you run npm install to install the dependencies. There are three major dependencies. You've got SQLite, of course, you've got the PubNub SDK and the uh, .env file for the environmental variables, which you need to configure. You can grab your API keys here. You can even use a demo API key, which is being used as an example in this repository. And then you just update your API keys in the env file in this project directory, which is right here. And we can just see what it looks like inside here. So we've got this env file, and we see here that it's pre-populated with some demo keys that work, just so it's easy for you to get started. And then, well, all you do is run npm start. I think, I'm pretty sure that's it, yeah, all right. Then you run npm start, which is what we did here. And then we can see the queries come in, and uh, that's all logged onto our server. So we can see, you know, as the data goes through the system. Then we have a web interface you'll also want to update the web interface uh, demo uh, HTML file with your API keys. This is done for you uh, automatically with the demo keys. So it makes it really easy for you to get started. And then you just open up index HTML, which is this page right here. And then you can run your own queries on it. And so we just say select star 
from test limit one and that gets us the data and that was coming from our sample data generator which it populated through a for loop enter into test the ID and value and then we just put in an integer from the for loop and then the value ID here as a string so that way we can get back that data and we just, just get back three of them. Let's see what happens when we get three. Yeah, so you can see this is what it enumerates as. And we can remove the limit altogether, which is a, you probably want to always have a limit, but just in case. And you can run that query as well, and that will give you uh, all the data. We'll do a code walkthrough of how to set up your own local host web server database. And it's actually pretty straightforward. This repository includes all the code you need. It's really simple too. I think we're around like maybe a hundred lines or so of code of JavaScript and the rest is just boilerplate. So what we have here is just walk through the details really quick. We've got an SQL server that contains Node.js application that uses PubNub to listen for SQL queries on a specific channel that executes them on an SQLite database. Now we, for the example purposes, we're using in-memory database. You can use a file database so that way that state is actually saved in between you know, system restarts and application restarts. In this case, we're demoing as an in-memory, so we're not accessing any of the disks. And the results from the query are sent back to the client as uh, through the response channels, all pre-negotiated. So we've got an SQL client demo example here, and we've got our server running here, simple, simple, simple NPM start. Uh, and then we run a test and then we get back all of our data and we can see it's logged here. So if we're gonna walk through the code, let's actually walk through the Node.js code first and that will be the server.js file. The server.js file holds uh, the important bits that we need to load our environmental variables, the SQLite database and the PubNub connectivity so that way we can send and receive the data between the two systems. We load the env data through the, our uh, env file. Then we initialize our SDK. We open up the database connection, which is in memory only, right? So we're only doing in memory. Uh, you can just specify a .sql file here if you want, and that will give you uh, persistent states. We are also creating a table, a test table, just for demo purposes, and we're inserting 10 values into this database. So that way we can have some data to play with then we open up our PubNub listener to receive data from the outside world, anywhere in the world, as long as there's internet connectivity. We get our request data, and this request data will then be used to check for the query uh, and the response channel. Now, this information is required, so we need to make sure that there's a query and a response message as well. Uh, our, so that way, if we don't have a response channel here, we're gonna need to have to throw an error because we don't know where to send it. <laughs> we need to know where to send it. So we run the database query, uh, then we get the errors, and, uh, or the errors if there's errors, arose otherwise. If there is an error, then we will send the error as well back to the client. Uh, and if there is, you know, if it's successful, then we'll send back the data. So that's an important aspect there. Then we just open up our channel to the query channel connection here, and then we're done. That was 56 lines of code. That was so quick. That was really straightforward and simple. Uh, that's all you need in order to run a home server for your database. Now, if we wanted to see what the client code looks like, it should also be mostly just CSS, I'm guessing, right? Yeah, so we got a bunch of CSS here. We can walk through that. We've got a text area. And then we've got a button to submit and a response element to show the data, right? So we've got our, our text area, uh, send button, and then a response area. So limit one, is that, is my server running? I'm pretty sure it's running. Yeah, okay. Then we walk through, we import our library, we have our dim, we have initialized our PubNub SDK, we have a response channel. And this is important that we wanna have a randomly generated channel for, you know, so that way we can have as many concurrent users as we need. Uh, we don't have to worry about responses from that perspective. And then we subscribe to our response channel. Then after that, we add a listener so that way we can process the events and the data coming back to the response channel. And then we populate that response element area, which is this area right here, this gray, this gray box. And then we capture the query data through the query element. We grab the value. Uh, and then the query is trimmed and it checks to see if it's empty or not. 
and then it will throw an alert if there is no query to send. If it otherwise, it will send the request to the query channel and it will include its response channel so it can get back the data. And that's it, that's all it does. And then once this happens, once you submit your query with the response channel, you're going to receive that data back from the Node.js server with the response data and then you populate the text screen element. So it just works like this. So I can update that to two, send query, boom, it all works. I didn't have to set up DNS, TLS certs, IP addresses. I didn't have to do any of that work. I didn't have to open up firewall rules. I don't have to worry about security. It's just ready to go. And this is how you can set up a home server with this GitHub repository, PubNub SQLite server. You can go beyond that. You might not have SQLite. You, you might want to do something else. Maybe you want to capture data in JSON files on disk. You can do basically anything. I like this approach because it's a little more flexible. Also, it's really fast and you can add indexes too to make this make it even faster. So if you have a lot of data, this, this will be uh, very performing. And it's really easy to set up.